installing the components into my truck for solar camping. I wanted to do this last time I went, but there was a construction project going on at our apartment complex and couldn't use the parking lot. There was a lot of activity. So I'll just go down the list of parts. There's a 1000 watt, as you can see, pure sine wave inverter. Uh, pure sine wave is important. It's pure sign it's not simulated or and it uh, it can go up to 8.3 amps at the outlets got uh, two AC outlets it's a USB port and it has high amp you can connect AC wires directly to this if you're gonna run something high amperage like on a microwave oven or something but this is the charge controller it's a 30 amp MPPT charge controller. The MPPT, I forgot what that means, but it's basically it uh, alters the current as needed for a specific battery type. It's a lot better for charging, it's more efficient because it does change the current. It's rated at 30 amps, and what that gives me is basically my 100 watt panel is 5.5 amps, so I could probably safely install four. Five more panels that's what the 30 amps means these are the batteries that I store the power in see they're 35 amp hour 12 volt batteries and uh, when I hook them in parallel you double the amp hours and that'll be 70 amp hours interesting story about these batteries I thought they were ruined because I accidentally drained them down to zero and you don't do that 50 percent is as low as you're supposed to go so I thought I had ruined them and I kept them charged for days and days and days and they seem to have rebounded uh, they they can run appliances all night because I tested them inside so they're not ruined as far as cables go um, there's the solar panel cables um, the solar panel isn't shown because that's one of the last things I install I just you know it, store it in the truck there's the negative battery cables I know these are all kind of mixed in here's the negative battery cables a shunt resistor for the multi ammeter that's on it this shows everything it shows battery volts system volts I guess shows the amperage the watts and the watt hours and then there's the positive cable you can see for the batteries in that that fuse there is pretty much fusing the inverter. I guess I should show on the back of the inverter uh, the fuse block. Really, all this is for is connect the charge controller to. If it wasn't for having to put fuses, 30 amp fuses on this, I could just run all these to a bus bar. But. And back to cables, there's the charge controller cables. And that just hooks the charge controller to the batteries. And I threw a switch on there so I could kill it at night when I don't want it draining power. It doesn't drain a lot, but might as well do what you can. So I've got to install all of this into there. Okay, it's been one hour later I guess and about five buckets of sweat later I have the components installed in the truck and you can see there's the charge controller it's on it's active it's running off the batteries I will keep the cables in the rear bed compartment along with my propane grill right behind the charge controller is the inverter you can see that's I can only back up so far it's fairly compact I got things squeezed in there and I just kind of shove all the extra wiring into the inverter compartment um, there's the switch for the charge controller turn it on and off got the batteries back here in the battery box you can see I have room for four if I'm going out longer I take my four big boys and uh, I've put the insulation in there cushioning to try to keep the shunt resistor away from the positive line so there's no way the shunt resistor can short out 
but that's the install uh, it is alive it's got 12.89 volts right here I have 12 volts DC available that's 12 volts DC and then just right across the way over here I have 110 120 AC available that's just an extension cord that wraps around to the inverter but there it is it took me an hour to put in